Hello, and thank you for the opportunity to present the Thin Manager 13 feature. My name is Nick Putman. I'm our product manager of the solution, and I'll spend just a few minutes walking through some of the enhancements that have been made in the Thin Manager version 13 platform. We'll categorize these as we usually do into four main categories, productivity, visualization, mobility, and security. I'd like to take just a few minutes to walk through each one of these categories, and I'll spend a few minutes demonstrating those capabilities to you in the product itself. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, introduce to you the REST API for Thin Manager. Uh, the API itself will enable partial uh, and partial backups and restores of the system database, our ability to commission Thin Manager at scale, as well as our ability to validate some of the the IT standards or other industrial standards that we may like to try to adhere to from site to site. Uh, the API will have the capability for you to query all information and gives you the capability to, to set or completely configure the product without ever having to launch the user interface. Uh, we will uh, we'll spend some time here demonstrating what the API looks like and the capabilities in the product. A few other things on the productivity side that we'd like to talk through are the database health check, support for uh, cookies in our web browser containers, uh, sound being adopted in container images, uh, as well as a change to our patch process. So the changes to the patch process will be such that there is no longer the requirement to uh, maintain or uninstall the service and reinstall the service. What that means for our customers is you'll no longer be prompted for user credentials when patching the software, this will be a more traditional patch process moving forward. So I will kind of jump into the software itself. Uh, I've got my version 13 Thin Manager system here running. Uh, again, very excited to present to you the API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the web browser. It's one way uh, web browser just on my desktop. It's one of the ways that I can access the API. Uh, I can I can utilize the API with whichever tool is is most comfortable and familiar to me. Uh, that could be using the, uh, it could be using PowerShell. In this case, I'm going to use our documentation, which is here uh, in a Swagger instance, will be pre-configured and preloaded for you. Um, all you'll need to do is, is hit your Thin Manager server uh, IP address and then hit the port, followed by API and documentation to complete the URL. That's how we can access the API. Uh, that port is configurable. So before I demonstrate the API, I'll show you where that gets turned on. Um, first and foremost, I'll launch the Thin Manager Server Configuration Wizard. I will find uh, on about the seventh page of the wizard that I now have the capability uh, to, to enable the API. I can enable API endpoints, so that will turn the API on. I can also uh, allow users to log in. There are two ways that we can authenticate the API for use with system keys and with user keys. System keys are managed here through the Thin Manager Server Configuration Wizard. I can manage those keys. Uh, I can generate a new system key. When I generate the key, I give that a logical name. I select manually which permissions I want that key to have. Do I want to allow connections? Do I want to allow users to be created with the API? Do I want to allow events to be scheduled? I can create all of these independent, uh, or I can select all of the permissions from which I'm interested. And then when I generate the key, key will be shown here at the bottom. Note that this is the only time this key will be displayed. So should you want to use this key or deliver this key uh, or reuse it, you'll need to copy that key and store it for uh, uh, safekeeping. Um, so I can use this key. I'll go ahead and copy this so we, we have it for future. Uh, there's also the user keys, which I'll demonstrate through the web interface with Swagger. So again, I have the ability to manage, revoke, uh, or extend keys from this location. Uh, but now that we know the API has been enabled, I'm going to jump back to the web browser interface. Um, the first thing that I would need to do in order to, to be able to interface with Thin Server via the API is I do need to authenticate or I need to authorize myself as a, a valid user here in the API. Uh, I did just generate a key, so I could use that to authorize myself. Instead, let's go ahead and, and take a look at what it looks like to authorize as a user. Uh, so I'm going to drop down the login endpoint. Um, I'm going to expand that out, and I'm going to hit the try it out button. Uh, in order to try that out, I'm going to need to put in my username and password. 
Now note here that I am being given the syntax for this particular, uh, this particular parameter. So if I wanted to log in with one of my known users, I'm on a Thin Manager demo kit today. I could use the uh, lab user and lab LOC, and I would have to put in my credential. Again, make sure you're you're only doing this uh, with, with credentials that uh, only you have visibility to. And I'm going to go ahead and execute. I've now generated an API key. This API key has inherited all of the permissions that were already assigned to the lab user in, in Manager. So now that I've generated that key, I can authorize the rest of the endpoints. I'm now authorized in this web instance. I'm now authorized to go start interacting with the API. You'll see that there is a, a vast amount of information uh, and capability within the API itself. This is where all the documentation exists. We could start with a very simple example, for example, getting the system uptime without having to go into the user interface to retrieve such a thing. Again, I could always try this out and execute the, uh, the sample code that's there for me, and I'll see that my system has been up for 36 minutes. That's a get variable or a, a get uh, parameter. Uh, so I can get all the system, uh, uh, system information I could also look to uh, set information with a put. So uh, I could use the put command. We could use a very, again, a very simple example here where I could try this out. And let's say I wanted to set the licensing mode of Thin Manager. If I look in my system at the current moment and I looked at licensing mode, I'll see that it's set as Thin Manager Master Licensing. Should I want to change that remotely? I could set that to Factory Talk Activation. I could execute. And I would be able to change the mode of my uh, software from this point. So we could see the, the ease of the documentation and what that's providing for us. There's obviously more complicated examples uh, or more uh, in-depth examples. We could look at getting all of the system settings or the different system attributes. Uh, what are our syslog settings? Do I want to allow the creation of users? What are the permissions associated with, uh, with my Thin Manager server? Who has which permissions? Again, I could change the uh, the ports. Completely be able to configure my system all without ever having to to launch uh, the Thin Manager user interface. This will be especially valuable when you want to take and reuse certain components of a configuration from one facility to the next, from one line to another, or you're at a centralized location and want to validate your IT standards such as DNS and Pixie settings across a large enterprise of installations. Um, so that's a, a brief overview of the REST API. Uh, a few of the other um, productivity type features that we had talked about were the database health, health check. That can also be found in the Thin Manager Server Configuration Wizard. Uh, if I look on the, uh, the database management page, I will be able to run the database integrity check. Simple tool, I'll be able to find that there were no errors in my database. Oftentimes when there is adverse behavior within the product, one of the things that our engineering team will do is they will look to see if there are any, um, any misalignments within the database itself. So this is a tool that will streamline and simplify our ability to support our customers and our resources in the field. Um, with version 12, we launched the capability to deliver web browsers uh, as in the form of a Docker container. And with version 12.1, we launched the ability to take those container images and run them on thin client hardware, reducing the need for server-based infrastructure, reducing the Windows licensing required, and again, simplifying our overall delivery of web-based applications to thin manager managed thin clients. Uh, one of the shortcomings of that release was that when you went to a web page, oftentimes cookies are stored uh, to, to, to ease the uh, the delivery of you know revisiting that page so say we were using a uh, a cached credential to access a page and we revisited that page we're not prompted to enter our credential each and every time uh, however because the because of the power of running everything on the device when we restart or power cycle a thin client um, all of that information would have been lost with version 13 one of the capabilities that you have now on the chrome or Firefox or any one of the, uh, the Citrix uh, con uh, dis container display clients is that you will be able to select that you want to preserve the browser cookies. 
by selecting this box, we will take the cookies and store them in our database so that next time that container is recreated on the thin client, we'll pass the cookies back to that device. And again, really simply simplifying your productivity on the floor when leveraging our container technology. Uh, additionally to containers, we have added support for sound to be passed through uh, an application running a container onto the thin client device. Pivoting back to our uh, release summary, I'd now like to highlight the visualization. Uh, there's a, an, another key component of the version 13 release, which I'm excited to highlight is something we're calling event based content delivery. If we think about the delivery mechanisms from Thin Manager in the past, we have always uh, highlighted that we could deliver capabilities based on three unique delivery mechanisms. Uh, with version 14 or version 13, that moves to four unique delivery mechanisms by device, by user, by location, and now by event. We'll take a look at what that really means and the power that that, that, that adds for us. I think it really completes our capability to deliver the right information to the right person at the right place at the right time. Really, really uh, kind of rounding out our, our ability to reduce your total overall cost of ownership. There have been some minor changes to the interface, as well as we've added some canned virtual screen layouts. I would, however, like to also demonstrate for you the event-based content delivery. So I'm going to return to my, uh, my demonstration here. I'm going to select one of my terminals that has a factory talk of USE application running. Uh, we'll use that to demonstrate our, our 13 capabilities with event-based content delivery. Before I do, I'm going to take a look at the Fin Manager events, which can be found in the tree on the left-hand side. I'm going to select Fin Manager events, and I'm going to take a look at a few that I've already created. Uh, the first that we'll leverage is the demo event on and demo event off. When we create a, a, an event, what we're looking to do is to create an expression, which is driven through the wizard or through the API. We'll give that a property name. And then we'll talk about what the value is that we want to compare that property against. This property can come from any external source. In our example today, we'll have that be a value that we're going to monitor in VUSE, some of which will be controller tags in Logix. Um, I've gotten a few examples here, a very simple example where I've created my logical expression. Next, I have selected the event action. In this case, I'd like to add a display client. Other actions include removing display clients, modifying permissions, toggling the view of the display clients on my thin clients, or even tiling the active display clients. In this case, when I see this event, I would like to add a display client. In this case, I'd like that display client to be the desktop. Um, for the first example, I have created a, uh, a again, kind of the, the, the hello world, very simple example, which is a push button in Factory Talk USC. We'll monitor the state of that push button. And when that push button is selected, we're going to trigger an event and we're going to deliver the application, which we specified in the Thin Manager event, demo event on, which was the desktop. I have a correlating demo event off and would be another push button that I could select, and that will remove the desktop from this experience. To modify the event action, I could simply come into Thin Manager, select yet a different application or a different uh, display client that I wanted to deliver. I could return to my terminal. And because I'm monitoring this event, I'm not using this button to deliver a specific display client. I'm monitoring the event that is this button. When I now select that button, I would be able to deliver whatever display client is associated with the event. Maybe more impactful would be to have events that are not manually triggered, something that we're looking at so we can deliver the right information to the right person at the right place at the right time. Uh, one possible thing that we could look at would be to monitor the value of, of a tag within a controller. In this case, I may find it useful to be able to uh, deliver a camera stream, for example, to, a, to an operator uh, when we see maybe a, a, a motor running higher than we would expect. In this simple example, I'm going to monitor the rotations per minute of the, the current uh, the motor that we have running. And whenever that's running, I'm going to go ahead and deliver another application, which in this case is a camera stream of the facility. And when it's not running, I'm going to remove that camera stream. So again, maybe a, a bit of a simple example here, but hopefully demonstrating 
the power and the capability of having these automated applications be able to deliver information to our operators. Uh, think of being able to deliver a camera stream when you broken the light curtain of a safety perimeter around a machine, or even uh, you know, being able to deliver other critical information when an alarm is triggered. So again, more to kind of come on that, that subject uh, throughout the calendar year, uh, but again, wanted to give you an idea of just how easy it is to set these up and what the value that can bring to the manager is. Um, we'll quickly toggle back to our release summary, and I would like to just briefly walk through mobility. We have added sound redirection for the uh, the mobile clients for iOS and Android platforms. We've adopted the ability for custom uh, certificates to be enabled for the web browser container uh, display clients. Again, kind of furthering that technology and, and taking the feedback from our customers that not all certificates are, are public. Sometimes they are custom generated. Bin Manager is now adopted in the Rockwell Automation Firewall utility. Uh, this is the Windows configuration utility that you'll find installed with many of your factory talk products. Uh, this will simplify your deployments and allow for configuration of all of the ports that are required for Thin Manager automatically by running that tool. Last but not least, we have added support for Secure Boot. Uh, this is a technology that uh, surrounds the boot process for the Thin Client hardware. Uh, this will be supported on a wide variety of our Thin Client uh, offerings, starting with the Osm, uh, the AV Osm and the 6300 thin client offerings. Those will now leverage the secure boot technology and kind of enhancing and moving us forward. Uh, I hope you've helped this and found this useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to the team and we look forward to your feedback on Thin Manager version 13. Thank you.